डॉक्टर जॉन मताई फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर सेप्टेम्बर नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट टू मे नाइनटीन फिफ्टी जॉन मताई एटीन एटी सिक्स टू नाइनटीन फिफ्टी नाइन was an economist who served as India's first railway minister and subsequently as India's finance minister taking office shortly after the presentation of India's first budget in 1948 he presented two budgets for 1949-50 and 1950-51 he resigned after presenting the 1950 budget following protest against vested large powers with the planning commission and pc mahalnobis birth and education Dr John Mathai was born in Calicut on 10th January 1886 the fifth son of Chellyal Thomas Mathai Dr John Mathai had three sisters his mother Anna belonged to the Tayil family of Kotayam a well-known and respected family of Syrian Christians in central Travancore After graduating in arts and law from Madras University he practiced as a lawyer for about 4 years later he proceeded to England for higher studies took doctor of letters from oxford and and doctor of science from london school of economics john matai married achamma john in 1921 in the jacobite church in trivandrum The three children Walsa, Duleep and Ravi were born respectively in 1922, 1924 or 1927. Like her husband she too was associated with many committees constituted by the central and state governments and was the president and vice president of several organizations dealing with problems of women and children. In recognition of her many contributions to the country she was confirmed with the Padma Shri 1955. Early years On his return to India Dr Mathai entered the Madras Government Service in 1918 as an officer on special duty in the cooperative department He then drifted into teaching first as a professor of economics at the Presidency College in 1920 and then later became a professor of Indian economics of the Madras University in 1922 He was also a member of the Madras Legislative Council in the same year In 1925 Dr Mathai joined the Indian Tariff Board as a member and served as president of the board from 1931 to 1934. He served for 9 years on the tariff board and thereafter was appointed director general of commercial intelligence and statistics. In his in this capacity he was nominated an official member of the Indian Legislative Assembly. Services to Tatas Dr Mathai served off and on for 15 years in the house of Tata which according to him was a period of his life that he enjoyed most Dr John Mathai was a highly respected and one of GRD Tata's close aides his counsel and advice were eagerly sought in Bombay house and he was fondly addressed as brother John Dr Mathai joined Tata as the director in 1940 and worked as director in charge of Tata Chemicals for 4 years which was launched in 1939 at Mithapur in Gujarat From chemicals he went on to Tata Iron and Steel Company Tisco while still with Tisco he was asked to join the interim government Tata's at that time had been considering various schemes of expansion and were in need of all their experienced personnel particularly in the senior management knowing this he was reluctant to leave them and join the government ranks however an arrangement was reached by JRD Tata and Pandit Nehru and his colleagues who were then engaged in discussing the details of the new government with Lord Wavell. The arrangement reached with them was that the Tatars would release Dr. Mithai for a period of the interim government, which was then not expected to last more than a couple of years, and that in the meantime, if Tatars were short of senior personnel, the government would agree to his reverting to the Tatars. Thereafter, he was relieved of his duties to join the viceroy's executive council he resigned and rejoined tatas 1950 during the second term in tatas dr mathai became the director in charge and vice chairman of tisco and telco he was also director of acc and indian hotels and the chairman of the sir dorabji tata trust and president of the court of the indian institute of science dr john mathai also took charge of the expanded department of economics and statistics He was also the chairman of the governing board of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences as well as the chairman of the governing council of the Tata Memorial Center. 
In 1953, Dr. Matai resigned from the directorship of some Tata companies but continued to be the director of the Tata Sons Limited. About the years spent in Tata's, Dr. Matai once said, I look upon it as the best part of my life. The work was very interesting. They maintain a very high standard of business. I was never called upon to compromise on any matters. Not once was I asked to do anything which I could not justify to my conscience. Dr. John Matai was the first non-Parsi to grace the position of chairman of the Sir Dorabji Tata Trust and left his mark in the trust by initiating two institutes. Contribution to the Nation Dr. Matai did not play an active role in the freedom struggle. Instead, he devoted himself to the garment service and academia. Politics had little attraction for him, but his experience in administration, business, and academic economics was one of the reasons why he was chosen by Lord Wavell, the then Viceroy as a candidate of the interim government while he was still with the Tatars. An invitation which he did not hesitate to accept when it was conveyed to him personally by Pandit Nehru, who he considered as one of the most inspiring men. In September 1946, Dr. Matai was appointed the finance member in the Viceroy's Executive Council with his vast experience of economic and financial matters. As finance member, he could not accomplish much, but the time at his disposal was short. However, it was during his tenure that the salt duty was abolished. He held the position as finance member till October 1946, after which he was appointed Industries and Supplies member for a few months. As an Industries and Supplies member, he was responsible for introducing the Rubber Production and Marketing Bill 1946, which laid a strong foundation for the development of rubber industry in India. Thereafter, he became the Minister of Railways and Transport, a portfolio which he held from January 1947 until September 1948. John Mathai assumed charge of the railways at a critical period of its history. The Second World War had brought about dislocation in railway transport as many railway lines had been dismantled during the war. The railways were passing through the worst difficulties of the post-partition period and Dr. Mathai was the target of a good deal of criticism in Parliament. He undertook various steps to address problems related to overcrowding, labour trouble, pilferage of goods, ticketless travel, Indianization of railways, improving conditions and amenities of third-class passengers and accidents during his tenure in office. One of the permanent institutions set up during the tenure of Dr. John Matai as Railways and Transport Minister was the Railways Rates Tribunal. He also had a unique distinction of presenting two railway budgets in the same year. In February 1947, before partition, he submitted the composite budget for British India and in November 1947, another budget was presented by him for the Dominion of India. However, he did, not, he did make some contributions to the transport system also, the most significant being the development of national highways. Dr. Mithai was later appointed Minister of Minister of Commerce and Industry and then elevated to the rank of Finance Minister at the end of September 1948. He presented two budgets between the year 1949-51. When he presented his first budget as finance minister in 1949, he followed the usual practice of reading speeches. According to him, reading manuscript speeches were a trial both to those who make and those who listen to them and involved very little effort to prepare. The budget speech of 1949 took him hardly a week to prepare and complete as M. V. Rangachari, a budget officer of the finance ministry, collected all the necessary data and arranged and compiled it into a master league draft which led him little to do except make a few verbal changes and add a few rhetorical touches. His speech, his budget speech of 1950 will always be remembered as the first finance minister of India who delivered an exemplar budget speech. It was a budget of 1950 that laid the foundation of the Planning Commission of India to carry out phased plans for optimal economic growth of the country. The budget he presented for the two years that he held charge of finance widely criticized as showing a marked capitalist bias and as overlooking the interest of the common man. One of the momentous decisions for which John Mathai was responsible during his tenure as finance minister was the devaluation of Indian rupee. The Indian rupee was devalued by 30.5%. The 
The justification for devaluation as far as India was concerned was that nearly 75% of our export trade was with countries in the sterling area and if the rupee was not devalued, the result would have been the diminishing of trade with those countries and in the course of time, the wiping out of trade in some, term, some items. Further, as a member of the sterling area, there, is, there was a moral obligation on the part of India to honor the decision. His last portfolio in the Nehru ministry was finance minister, after which he resigned in protest against the increasing power of the planning commission. In 1953, he served as the chairman of the Taxation Inquiry Commission, appointed by the government of India, where he was responsible for laying the foundation for restructuring and modernization of the tax structure of the country. Other services, Dr. John Matai was the first president of National Council of Applied Economic Research. In CAER, the first chairman of the Court of Governors, the administrative staff of India, Hyderabad, first chairman of the National Book Trust of India. He was actively involved in the World Conference of Christian Youth held in Kotayam, Kerala in December 1952, chairman of Fertilizers and Chemical Travancore Limited from July 1957 to 31st July 1959. The first Demographic Research Institute in 1959, 56 in association with the United Nations, uh, which is the International uh, Institutes of Population Studies in Bombay, now Mumbai, is a brainchild of Dr. John Mata and J.R.D. Tata, appointed as the first chairman of the State Bank of India, 1955. Renowned Writings As an academic, Mathai was a keen writer with a number of publications to his credit, his most well-known writings include Prisoner for the, Our Mind and The Road to Freedom, Village Garment in British India and India and the War. Awards Achievements The British government conferred him with the Companion of the Order of the Indian Empire, CIE, in 1934 for his contribution to the Tariff Board. He was awarded the King George V Queen Mary Silver Jubilee Medal, 1935. He was confirmed the Padma Vibhushan by the Indian government for his contribution towards education and public finance, public service in 1959. His death, he died on 2nd November 1959.